Praise the Lord. This is the true worshiper again. Here we are in February 2022. I have a word for the believer today. I want to remind the Christian believer of this one thing that most believers don't want to go through. But you have to endure suffering and persecution. You have to endure that. When trouble comes, you can't say, oh man, not this again. I don't want to go through this. I'm about sick of going through this. I'm done. You throw up your hands and you walk away from God. You have now told yourself you are no longer a Christian and you do not want to wait on God to fight your battles. You don't want to wait on God to tell you what to do about your situation and your circumstances that are troubling you. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have paid your tithes and your offerings, and you're wondering why nothing has happened. And I'm going to tell you something, saints, and you may not want to hear this, but God requires obedience over sacrifice. We're going around, well, I had to sacrifice this, and I had to sacrifice that, and I'm still not appreciated, and this is not going well, and that's not going well. But you need to check yourself, because... There is blessings for obedience. Have you obeyed God when he said forgive? Have you obeyed God when he said stop gossiping? Have you obeyed God? You read his word and it's superficial. It, it just is on the outside of you. You wear the clothes, you play the part, but it's not in your heart. So I'm going to read something to you out of 2 Timothy. Okay, this is my charge to the believer. This is Paul's charge to Timothy. So 2 Timothy chapter 3, starting at the 10th verse. The Apostle Paul says this. To Timothy. He says, But you, Timothy, certainly know what I teach and how I live and what my purpose in life is. This is one believer, one preacher, one minister talking to another man that has a calling on his life, and he's telling him, this is what you must do. If you know me, you know how I live. Nobody else can tell you about the Apostle Paul. He's telling Timothy this. The rumors that you may hear in the street about me, Timothy, no. He says, you know what I teach. And you know how I live and what my purpose in life is. You know my faith, my patience, my love, and my endurance. You know how much persecution and suffering I have endured. Now, the Apostle Paul is explaining the sufferings and the persecutions that he has had to endure preaching the good news, preaching the gospel, telling others about Jesus and how God wants us to live. And he suffered for that. He was thrown in prison. He was shipwrecked. He was beaten. Okay, 
A lot of things happened to this man, and just those two is enough, especially when they just kept happening over and over and over and over and over again. And he won't stop. He won't stop preaching the good news. He won't stop living the life of Christ. He won't stop obeying God. Uh-huh. Watch this. He says, you know how much persecution and suffering I have endured. You know all about how I was persecuted in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. But the Lord rescued me from all of it. This is what most believers don't get a chance to experience and testify. That God rescued them from all of the sufferings and the persecutions. And the reason why most followers of Christ, most believers, most Christians are not able to testify that God saved them from everything that the devil threw their way is because they don't stay in the race long enough. This journey is a treacherous journey. This race is full of traps and pitfalls. This walk of Christ following Jesus is not easy. It's the narrow road. And if you want to make it into heaven, you can only make it into heaven on this narrow road. The Bible says that few will ever find it. Because when they do, they don't even want to stay on it because of the sufferings and the persecutions that are on this narrow road. But if you stay on it long enough, God will rescue you. He will save you. He will deliver you from all of your troubles, sickness, and diseases. But the Lord rescued me from all of it, yes. And everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Ask yourself this question. Do I want to live a godly life? Do I want to live a godly life? If you want to live a godly life, then you are saying yes to the sufferings and the persecutions. And a lot of people don't want to go through that. And that's why they turn away from God. I've had my share of suffering. I've had my share of persecutions and I know it's not over. Because I desire to live a godly life. But evil people and imposters will flourish. Everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil people and imposters, fake Christians, will flourish. And those are the ones that are on the wide road. There's two roads that lies before you and I, one is the wide road 
that is called the highway to hell. And the other one is called a narrow road. And it's filled with difficulties. So what happens is most people chose the wide road because on that wide road is not too many sufferings, no persecutions. You do just what you want. You fight your own battles. You take revenge. On that road is an eye for an eye. On the narrow road is where Christ is. He's on that road saying, follow me. He's on that road saying, pick up your cross and follow me. There's no cross to pick up on the wide road. The reason why he tells us to pick up our cross and follow him because we're going to follow him and we're going to die with him. He carried his cross and was crucified on it. And he's letting us know, if you want to follow me, then pick up your cross. Because if you die with me, you're going to raise up with me. You'll be resurrected with me. And you have to believe that. Hmm. But evil people and imposters will flourish. They will deceive others. And will themselves be deceived. But you must remain faithful to the things you have been taught, child of God. You know they are true, for you know you can trust those who taught you. You have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting Jesus, Yeshua. All scripture is inspired by God. The words in this Bible, they are inspired by God. And it's useful to teach us what is true. And to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. Grab your Bible. Read it. If you're on YouTube and you, you find someone preaching the good news, listen. And don't just be a listener of the word. Do what the word says. It corrects us. The word of the, all scripture is inspired by God. And what does it do? It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God used it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Every good work is not just preaching. Every good work is not just teaching. Every good work is being kind to your neighbor. Loving those right there who are with you. Forgiving. Showing mercy to other people. Being respectful. Being kind. Helping those who are less fortunate and not judge them. You got five leather coats in your closet and you see a man on the street freezing and he has none. But you won't go in your closet and give him that coat. 
that you pay $700 for? I would. I've done that. I've done that more than one time. Because that human life is worth more than my $700 leather coat. And I got five or six of them. I can't wear them all at one time. He needed it. So I gave it to him. This word, God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. I'm not bragging or boasting on what, what I've done with a coat. That was just an example. Even when I just had one coat. I was in a position to go buy another one. That homeless individual wasn't. Take mine. After I did that, I was persecuted. I was called a fool. I was, I was told I was stupid. I wouldn't have done that. He probably took that coat and sold it and bought drugs. I mean, people say all manner of things. But see, I worship and serve and bow down to my creator who made me. And I'm going to obey his word. And I don't care about what other people say about me. When I do things like that. Let's go to chapter 4 in Timothy. I, sol I solemnly urge you. In the presence of God. And Christ Jesus. Who will someday judge the living. And the dead. When he comes to set up his kingdom. Preach the word of God. Be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching. For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. Hmm. Itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. But you should keep a clear mind in every situation don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. I thank the Lord for his word today and for reminding me because a lot of us can go through so much suffering and persecution that we will forget that in order for us to live a godly life, we must welcome the suffering and the persecution and not be like, oh man, I'm sick of this, not this crap again. You, no, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. It gives God glory when you can tell other people that you were in a bind. You were about to lose your home. The doctor said you only had six months to live. And those six months have turned into 13 years. the sufferings and the persecutions. You want to be someone to say that, yes, this and that happened to me, but God rescued me from all of it. Ain't that some good news? That's some good news 
to someone that's suffering, someone that's pers being persecuted. You can be per persecuted because of your race. You can suffer because of your race. That's one thing. But when you are suffering because you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that's a total different suffering and a total different persecution. It is not the same. It's not the same. I want to say something to you, saints. Give your life to the Lord. If you're listening to this word, I pray that the good Lord would forgive you when you ask for forgiveness. I pray that you will turn away from your evil and wicked ways. Humble yourselves and ask God to forgive you. Ask yourself, who are you living for? Who are you trying to please? Who are you trying to look good for? A time is coming when you, we're all going to die. And everybody that you are friends with, who are in your circle that think like you think, believe like you believe, they're not going to be standing next to you on Judgment Day. It's just going to be you. And God's going to ask you some questions. He may not even ask you any questions. He may just open up a book. And if your name is not written in this Lamb's Book of Life, then you have made the choice before you died that you want to go to hell. Because God didn't send you there. You chose that. You chose that while you had a chance to live a better life. You chose every day to turn up. You chose every day to be hateful. You chose every day to stir up trouble in your family. You chose to be unforgiving. And you even laugh and mock at those that preach the good news to you. God says that I have given you a lot of time to change your ways. And then you died. And then you met God and he opened up the book. And he told you, get away from me. You worker of iniquity. I know you not. And then he'll have his servants. He'll have his angels take you and cast you into hell. If you want to live a godly life, get your Bible, turn to 2 Timothy, Chapter 3, start at the 10th verse. Read all of that, and then when you get to chapter 4, read verses 1 through 5. And find out, ask yourself, is this what I want? Do I want to live a godly life. And if Jesus Christ, if Yeshua is not worth the suffering and the persecution, then brothers and sisters, you've made your choice. 
You've chose that wide road. You chose to go to hell. Because the word says, if you desire and want to live a godly life, you will be you will experience suffering and persecution. Well, that's all I have for you. This is the true worshiper. God bless you. I didn't want to stay before you long because it was self-explanatory. I'm preaching the good news. And this is good news, what I just gave you. That Jesus Christ is on the throne. Yeshua is on the throne. He died for us so that we can be saved from eternal damnation. He went in his father's house and in, in, in his father's house and prepared a place for us in heaven. And we can go there. We can go there. If only we believe. But you got to first start with obeying God. Believing and obeying God. Please, I'm begging you, don't go to hell. Don't go to hell. Whatever you're going through, when you trust God, it may take months, it may even take years, it may take days. However long it takes, it's based on you. It's based on you. God knows what he's doing. He took an innocent young man and allowed him to be thrown into a pit by his own brothers. And then they sold him into slavery. Then this young man by the name of Joseph he gets a job in a king's palace. And the king's wife lies on him and says that this boy tried to rape me. Then they throw him in prison. You see how the persecutions and the sufferings look? And God rescued him out of prison through all of that that he went through and made him the prince of Egypt. That king said, you can have everything except my throne. You can run this whole country. You can run this whole city. He went through all of that behind a lie, behind jealousy. Because this young man believed in God when he was a child. He never stopped believing in God. He, want, he desired to live a godly life. And at 12 and 13 years old and 14 and 15 years old, his own family wanted to kill him because he loved God. I love the Lord. I love him. I trust him. He has saved my life and rescued me from so much. So much. From death. From homelessness. From confusion. from sickness. I suffered a lot. Some of it was because of my disobedience. Oh yeah, I gotta take credit for that. 
Some of my suffering came because of my disobedience. Mm -hmm. But it also came because of my belief in the Lord Jesus Christ and his word. And my new life. I don't do the things that I used to do. I don't think the way I used to do. Think. My life has been changed by the word. I have to obey the word. I no longer live to please myself or to please others. I have to obey God. I want to obey God. I love obeying God. I'm excited to obey him. And you should be excited too, child of God. Put down the weed. Stop believing the lie that is good for health benefits. Put down the Hennessy and the scotch and, and the beer and the cigarettes. Just put it down. You don't need it no more. Once you give your life to God, you don't need that no more. Christ medicates me now. The word medicates me. If I'm stressed out, the word, I just listen to the word. I just begin to pray and thank God. Stress is gone. Trouble comes, I don't move. God says, be still. This battle's not yours, it's mine. You just wait. Be still and know that I am God. So I wait. I don't move. I wait. I watch and I listen and I pray. And he'll tell me what to do. When trouble comes. Amen. So. That's all I have for you. If you want to live a godly life, then you need to welcome the persecutions and the suffering. Don't run from them. Because when they come and when it's over with, it makes you godly. That's why they're there. That's why they're there. God is training us up with trouble. He uses trouble and persecutions to equip us and train us. Train us how to deal with so many, deal with the impossible. You're faced with the impossible. You always face with a no way out situation. And God steps right on in. And when he does that, that brings you closer to him. Teaches you how to trust him. You're going to have a lot of trouble so you learn to trust God. You'll have, a, you'll have millions of persecutions until you learn to trust him. The sooner you learn to trust him, the better it is for you. The Apostle Paul, we know that he, he loved and trusted God. Jesus Christ, we know that he loved the Father. He was persecuted for three years straight. Just those three years and then he was crucified. But every day of his life, when he was baptized and started his ministry and began to preach, the Bible says he had no place to lay his head. He go to one town, they want to chase him out of there. Lying on him, calling him the devil, calling him the prince of uh, um, hell. Calling him the devil. That he could heal people because he's Satan. To be talked about like a dog. Lied on. 365 days a year for three years straight. And the whole time, he's doing good. And you got people who are following him that believe him. 
And then you got people who used to follow him that don't follow him anymore and they don't believe him. They're agreeing with the naysayers now. They're with the haters. They're with, it's, they're with the unbelievers. Everybody's jealous now. They're on the side of the other religious leaders who can't do the works of Christ. So they're jealous. They hate him. Hmm. 365 days a year. Every day of your life you're being talked about. There's trouble. There's suffering. Why? All because you love God. That's why most people don't want to believe in God. They don't want to. They don't want to put down what they, their their alcohol, their weed, their their meth, their pills. They don't want to stop doing evil. They say, "What's the use?" I'm looking at what you Christians going through. Ah, that's all right. I can do bad by myself. This is what they say. But you're not looking at the whole picture. The whole picture of your life on earth includes your life in heaven or hell. Which road are you going to take? The wide road that leads to hell or the narrow road that leads to heaven like the word says. This is the true worshiper. God bless all of you. I'll talk to you some other day.